Silver Schemes Workshop and Mass Department Colloquium. This is a colloquium. I'm not so sure how much it will have to do with Hilbert Schemes. Uh, we're very pleased to have our own from Stony Brook, Alexei Zinger, who will give an overview of mirror symmetry. Thank you very much for the invitation. So, so, so I, will try to, I will try to give an indica uh, indication of, of what kind of things this thing involves. But uh, as part of this, I'm not going to make uh, very precise statements because uh, there's no actually formal statement to this. So, so, so uh, mirror symmetry originates in string theory, and uh, I'm not exactly sure where the original statement comes from. So one reference I found points to Dixon's 88 paper, which may not be a correct reference for this. So, so n not for the string theory, but for the statement of a principle. So that roughly says that A model of X is equivalent to B model of X dual. Now, so, so that's usually the way we hear this in mathematics. And when we hear A model, we should think of uh, some black topology, some black geometry. But uh, one strange thing about uh, this category uh, is that it involves actually counting complex, maybe sometimes real, curves. And on this side, B model basically means complex geometry. And uh, so in complex geometry, this could be a, maybe a variation of, com of complex structures. Or maybe eigenvalues of Laplace operator. So, so, so you have some kind of Kähler manifold that has a metric. So you can look at the Laplace and you can look at eigenvalues. And uh, so this is roughly what this should involve. And uh, on the math side, the goal is to make sense of this. So, so uh, usually I'll be talking about complex curves because they're easier. And uh, if I'm talking about complex curves, we're going to sit in a complex manifold X. So in particular, that X there is, is always a manifold of some kind. And this is just a Riemann surface, but possibly singular. Oh, so what does this mean? It could be something like this. You should think of this as being essentially a sphere with two points identified. And uh, so the sphere has genus zero. So since this is basically a sphere, I'll, I'm going to call this genus zero also. So and what, it, what it means to count curves is uh, the fixed type, type of a curve. So, so in this case, maybe it's the genus, a degree, so maybe cut out by some equation equations or more geometrically uh, homology class and so, so you fix fix type and uh, maybe you fix some constraints and you get a number 
So you get a number of curves of a certain type passing a certain constraints. The reason you want to fix a constraint because there might be infinitely many curves. So as an example, number of lines through two points is one. So we got two points. There's only one line. Now, so so, so what happens here? <coughs> yes. So 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 that's precisely it. Yeah. So what 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 this thing is? Well, so so first of all, we can think of these lines as being either C lines inside of C, no C C N or C P N. Or we can think of them as being R lines inside of Rn or Rpn. And you know, it's, it's always one. And uh, so, so when you look at the line inside of Cpn, it looks exactly like a sphere. So this is genus 0. And of course, it's given by degree one equation, so it's degree one. Right, uh, is this okay? Now, so, so there is one unfortunate thing here is that you have to fix these constraints. So since you have to fix these constraints, it's very difficult to put it in here. Because constraints are kind of arbitrary. So it would be better if you didn't have to take any constraints. So, so in some way, it's simpler is to take x to be a Calabi-Yau threefold. So, 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 so all that that means is that uh, it's it's maybe Kähler or projective. So a technical term would be KLM projective, and uh, C1 of tensor bundle is 0. And sometimes people put other conditions on this. But really, one should think of this as being locally C3, with a little bit additional structure. And the special thing about this is that uh, so. It's almost, you know, it's, it's, it's basically what's special about Calabi of threefolds, both these conditions, is that you expect <coughs> finite number of curves of each type and degree. And that's the key property of Calabi Yau manifold. Yes, so, so, so sorry, free fold means complex dimension three. So a real dimension six, but it has to have a complex structure. So, so main example. <coughs> which is known as, as the quintic. And, and this is really the main example which, uh, which kind of, Central to this uh, to, 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 to this field. So, so it's denoted x five inside of CP four. There's also going to be a real quintic, which is an RP four. So, so, so x five is just a degree five hypersurface inside of CP four. So I'm going to write down an equation for Fermat quintic. So what it means in CP4 is that you multiply it by lambda, and they're all equivalent. So you just add them up, and you should get zero. So this is four-dimensional. You impose one, one, one equation, and uh, okay. Should I write this out as inside of CP5? 
It's a quotient of something. Does everybody know this notation? And uh, the real quintic, so there's two ways to think about this. One way is to just take the same equation inside of RP4, just take everything real. But a different way to think about this is uh, Describing the empty set with that equation. What? <laughs> with that equation, that'd be a nice way of describing the empty set. I mean, to change some. Well, why is it empty set? Oh, I'm sorry. It's, no, it's 50 degree, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's actually, so it's actually RP3, uh, very often. So, so, so now we're thinking about this is to take this inside of x5. But when you think about CP4, there's a natural conjugation here. It's put bars everywhere. And that's precisely uh, with these, so that Z bar put Z everywhere equals, equals to Z. So there's a natural conjugation. You put bars everywhere. You can think of it as being, this is x5 in the sector P4. Now, the first thing about this main example is that uh, <coughs> this x5 has uh, lots of curves, uh, lots of lines. It actually has infinitely many lines. So, so for example, if you, if you, if you take uh, the first three coordinates, Adapt to zero, then uh, this point, so I take the first three coordinates, t and minus t, belong to x5 for all t complex numbers. So, so as you vary t, this becomes a line. It's just that it's, it's, it's linear. <coughs> and for each of these, you get a line. So, so for each conic, you get a whole family of lines. And there is actually, if you play around, there is actually 50 of these things. I understand what you're writing. What you t, write comma, minus t. It looks like it's t sub what? It's t, t comma. comma. Sorry. So, so, so there are basically 50 ways of doing this, and it gives you 50 families. It's kind of unfortunate, because it's a very nice equation. But as I said, you should expect finite number. And the way you get finite number is uh, you deform equation and if you if you deform it generically you will actually get finite number <coughs> results for lines Careful, so I'm being careful to say lines here because eventually you don't get expected results. So, 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 so the expected results for lines is uh, I'm going to write it n01. So this is uh, the genus. And so, so this is the genus. And that's the degree. So it's, it's 28, 75. This was known classically. Uh, you, you, so this is the early class of a bundle over uh, the Grassmannian of two planes in uh, in mm. C5. So, so, but you can also do this thing with real lines. So, oh, actually, before, yeah, so, so, so for real lines. Are they all embedded? What? They're all not singular and all of them. Uh, these are lines. So all the lines inside of, uh, they're all lines, lines inside of projective space, so they're all smooth. So yes. I'm say the lines. The, the CP one's of degree one, right? Yeah. They're, so, so, so. They're, they're so, 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 so they're lines that sit inside of CP four. Oh, okay. And I also, I'm asking them to lie inside of a quintic. <laughs> so, 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 you can also look at real lines. So you can even think of them being inside of this thing. 
or you can think of them as being inside of inside of this thing. Or you can think of them as being inside of this thing, but just being preserved by this map. So the image is preserved. So I'm going to denote it as a zero one real. And so here something interesting happens, it's plus or minus fifteen. Uh, so the thing is you have to count this sign. So, so, so this first appears, uh, as far as I know, in Jake Solomon's thesis. But really, it's, it's the same classical computation. It's still the other class of uh, Grassmann. It's just uh, most of the thesis is that it actually makes sense in a bigger context. So, so and I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that this was not known before, because it's just the early class of the bundle. What is the sign? What? what? What is the sign? Plus or minus. Yes, but how do you decide which is which? So, so OK, so, so you, you, you have to choose a spin structure on. on uh, There's a convention of what you count with, you're saying. Yes. I mean, so, so you want the number of lines to be positive, so you can take a plus here. But you need to choose an orientation. So you need to choose an orientation on this thing, which is RP3. And you need to choose a spin structure, and that gives you a sign. But obviously, you probably want to choose it to be plus 15. But really, it, it, so it says that there is at least 15 lines. There could be a lot more. So, so if you try to deform equation like this, it's not going to give, get you very far in terms of getting expected number of curves. Because at some point, things get problematic. So defining. So, so what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to make sense, uh, give a way of making sense of this side. So, so, so defining expected. So in the version I'm presenting, the key idea goes back to Gromov. Eighty-five paper. And uh, so, so the idea is that uh, the genus G degree D complex curve. Oh, wait, genus G curve. Is the image of a holomorphic map u from sigma into x? So this is a genus G remote surface. That's more or less the definition of a curve, if one wants to take it this way. So, so the advantage of it looking this way is that you have an equation, Cauchy-Riemann equation. And if you have an equation, uh, so you're really looking at, at all, the, all the maps that solve this equation. If this equation is not regular, well, you can deform it. <coughs> so if a solution set is not regular, when you deform this. So if what you deform it to is uh, is uh, you know you put some kind of deformation term so 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 precise definition of what this new is uh, there's a whole series of papers beginning with, with basic cases starting with, with Ruan and Tian 
uh, maybe around 94, uh, when when Ron when Lin Chen and Fukai Ono nice uh, sounds. So 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 so, so 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 these three sort of are fairly uh, reasonable case, which is actually so, so so this actually covers the case of the quintic. And that that three small general cases. But you, but you can define this. So when you're counting real lines, you're thinking of them as boundaries of disks, and the sign has to do with which side of the disk? No, no. So, so, so okay. So, uh, if you count disk, you actually get 30. And you get plus or minus 30. They, they, they come with the same sign. So by, by real lines, I mean the lines that are fixed by this. Right. Each of which divides a... In, in, in the, in the two, in the, yes. So actually, in general, a complex curve, a real curve, does not have to divide into pieces because may have no fixed locus. But all these ones do. One or two always. Yeah. yeah. For this kind of this job. So then. If you have this uh, kind of uh, Calabi Yau freefold, then this NG, there's a NGD, which is by definition number of solutions of, of the bar goes to new with uh, the genus of sigma B and G and the degree. The point is this number is finite. So, so this is known as uh, the genus G degree D Gramovitan invariant of X. <coughs> and that's the thing that should be going on that side uh, in one version. So the end, I'll stay the second version. You're supposed to pick up this version, but it's not known yet. So that, that's one definition of this. So, so one minor detail, this, this is actually a rational number. Now, why would the number of solutions of this thing be a rational number? Well, well so you have to come back uh, to this equation. And when you're thinking about holomorphic U, let's suppose you look in degree two maps. There's going to be a double cover of, of a degree one line. There's going to, so, so. So this counts, to, uh, for example, 2 to 1 covers. So, so, so for example, n 0, 2 uh, also includes uh, 2 to 1 covers of p1 of, to the line in x. And uh, so, so this goes z going to z squared, basically. And this has a group of automorphisms of order two. And if you count as something with an automorphism, well, you should divide it by two. Except it actually becomes a little bit more complicated. You're actually dividing here by eight. <laughs> because it's, a, it's more complicated because there's, this, there's actually a, the number of these covers is not finite. It's determined by, by two branch points. So it's actually dimension two. You have to be careful about what happens to that equation. So, the, so this is a complex Gramov-Witten invariant. Well, the real one. So, so real Gramov-Witten invariant. This should be a solutions such that the image of u which is the curve inside of x, is preserved by a conjugation. So, 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 so this, this bar is a map from x back into itself. This is just conjugation in x. So, 
so, so obviously it's going to be some kind of subset of the other ones because not not all the images are preserved. Still for the quintic? What? what? You, is this still for the quintic or it's a projective manifold and you have conjugation? Okay, so so, so, so so I'm mostly focused on the quintic, but in general you want to take a splicing manifold with. Okay, so you want to take a projective manifold, maybe which is preserved by uh, by conjugation of Pn, or maybe you want to take a symplectic manifold, which is uh, has an anti-symplectic evolution. But as an example, I'm focusing on quintic. <coughs> now, are you always looking at conjugation uh, at any holomorphic evolutions that have fixed points? Or sometimes you study things that don't uh, they don't have to have fixed points. Uh, in which case, you could ask, what does the real curve mean? But again, I wanted the ones that are preserved by evolution. So, 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 so NGD is, is defined for all G. So, so that, that's that's the words I mentioned before. The complex ones. The, the, the real ones become become more interesting. N zero dr. This is count of real spheres. So again, it's, it's spheres that are preserved by this evolution. So, 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 so this is defined. So, so, so this goes. So, some cases go back to Cho and Solomon. It's separate. And uh, and there is another case which is handled by Tigrani's recent work. So, 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 so the difference between the two things is that uh, they define it under some topological assumptions, and that removes the assumptions. Uh, one interesting thing is that in all known cases, when you have to do, when you remove these assumptions, the invariants vanish. And it's all in all the known cases of the computer. And it's also predicted by physics to vanish. But uh, there's no clear reason at this point why they actually vanish, if it's true. No. What did you say when you remove the assumption? What? So, 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 so when you remove, so this is defined under some as topological assumptions. In some cases, this assumption is not satisfied. When, the, when you can use this approach, uh, I mean, to add it to this. But when this assumption is not satisfied, in all the known cases when we can compute the invariance, they turn out to be zero. Furthermore, in, even in cases when we cannot compute it, uh, physics predicts that this should be zero. But there is no obvious reason why they are. I mean, the more, uh, Mathem obvious mathematical. Yes. yes. Uh, right? I'm a little confused. At the beginning, you said you were kind of, was a duality between symplectic geometry and complex geometry. Yeah. You only seem to be talking about complex geometry. Yeah, I think so. I think the next one is going to be a little bit of complex. <laughs> and so I'm actually finishing with the symplectic, but I will come back to symplectic again because that's what I. No, you're only talking about complex. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. So, so it looks like I'm talking about complex geometry here, right? <laughs> okay, so, so, so right. So, 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 okay. So, so all this, uh, uh, this depend on uh, x omega, but not uh, on j, a complex structure compatible. B for omega. And if it's omega up, up to deformation, so it doesn't have a fixed cohomology class or something, or is it? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can deform it. So, so okay. So omega locally, this thing is uh, it's a symplectic form. So locally, it looks like dxi is dy. No, but what I meant is that a priori you might be able to find invariants that depended upon a choice of the, the cohomology class of omega. No, no. So, 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 so if you if you homotop this thing, you homotop that thing. So, 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 so if it's not, uh, <coughs> so, 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 so even even when you define the other version, the, so the other version involves a whole bunch of Lagrangians inside of this thing. Uh, so Lagrangian sounds like uh, there's n there's really not no J, but if you actually want to define morphism between them, define a category, you again have a J. So, so there is always J to define on this side, but everything is independent of J. That's Omega. But you have to use non-integrable j's in general to define things. 
actually no. I mean, the thing, the thing which takes care of everything is this. So you can, you, you can start with integrable j. And this one absorbs the uh, deformations of complex structures completely. If you define generally enough, it absorbs it. Okay, so, so, so then the higher genus ones, the real ones, this uh, become trickier. So, 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 so this is being, I think it will be done fairly soon. So, 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 so being defined, so, 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 so Georgiev, uh, um, Mohammed Kakrani, and me. So, so there's different approaches exactly how to formulate this, but basically I, th I think it will be done eventually. Uh, very soon. So, 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 so this, this is the A model, or one version of the A model. It's, 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 it's all these numbers. In particular, one purely mathematical problem is uh, on this side is compute all GD and, and GDR. So um, in this setting, so you also have a real structure, I guess that's an anti-symplectic. Involution, yeah. yeah. But uh, as you deform the, the, the coefficients, can we have real loci that presumably are not diffeomorphic to, get to each other? Does that change the invariant? Uh, OK, so, 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 so. The, so the invariance diff you choose x and you choose omega, which is uh, with a fixed anti symplectic -like evolution. Now, if you deform them together, you get a family. If you deform them reason reasonably, hopefully you should get them. So if you deform them in a family, you get an invariance because you just take, take a part the usual way. So I'm just sort of thinking, if you, if you take different real quintics, for example, do you get different invariants? So, 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 so if you take a different evolution on, on a fixed thing, you may, ha may, may get different invariants. Now, do we know of any example? So, 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 so with PN, there is two involutions with odd dimensional PN. One has fixed locus and one does not. So we, in fact, get in general zero where we can compute the invariance, we can actually get the same invariance up to sign. Because the sign is uh, uh, not very well defined. But uh, the way the sign is defined, so, so there is some flexibility of choosing the signs. So it's really hard to see uh, precise examples when you get different things. If you can deform it, so there's no points. What? what? Presumably, if you have something that you can deform, so there's no points. No, no real points. No real points. Then but, 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 you can still have real curves, curves, right? They're just invariant. Yeah, no, no, no. You, you could still have the. You could still have real curves. Genus zero. Yes, but you don't have any fixed points. Like you have, a, you can have a conic, which is real but has no real fixed points. So, for example, if you you, you could take. You think of CP3 as having a, uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a Calabi, yeah, but just to get a, a, a part of yeah. standard involution of CP3 you get that comes from the returning on it multiplication by J. Uh, then there are lots of real lines in there. There's actually a foliation of CP3. Right? Yeah. But, so, 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 in evolution, so, so in, on P1 there is an evolution that has no fixed locus. It's just Z going to 1 over Z, Z 1 to minus 1 over Z bar. That has no fixed locus in P1. And the same you can do in, in any dimensional projective space. Right, so, so I think I'm running kind of slow. Okay, so, 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 so what X star is, is known as, as a mirror <coughs> of X. There should be another Calabia of three fold. And so, so, so the, it's actually not clear what this should mean, but there is a construction Batyev Borisov. Oh, yes, uh, 92 maybe somewhere. 
it's actually two separate papers. And um, so, 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 you, you, so this g gives you a x tilde for many x. And, so, and the many x is uh, complete intersections. Uh, infinotoric uh, manifolds. Uh, so, so, so the key property of this mirror symmetry is that. Uh, so I'm going to use a technical term now. So, so H, H1 of x, T star x, isomorphic to H star x dual. The point the point here is that uh, so, so so if you think of this, this is what tells you how omega varies. So this is this looks at variations in like a form omega, and the set, this one is variation. This is cotangent, this is tangent there. Of C structures. Now, so, so, since I don't have time, I'm not actually going to describe explicit construction for Twintic. What's the word after Fano there? Toric. Tor toric. Sorry. <coughs> is F star star X? Not necessarily. What? It's x star star x. Yeah, that's right. Double mirror. So, 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 yeah. The double, the double mirror is taking you back. It's it's supposed to. So actually, so so as far as I understand, if you if you so so as far as I understand, if if you go into complete intersections, the mirrors are not unique. But if you take hypersurfaces, they are unique. So, uh, so yes, it should take it back, in some sense, if you if you group them together. So 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 if we start with the quintic, we get uh, a one-dimensional family. mirrors. So, so, so I can, I'm going to write it like, like this, so x5 star dual is the whole vibration. It's a vibration over p1. So, so if, you, if you take a lambda in here and fiber over Lambda, this is smooth. Uh, if lambda is not equal to one or infinity. So, so, so this is the choice which is made in physics, in explicit construction of this mirror. And uh, x1 star has uh, what is called ordinary double point. So, so what, what x1 star looks like is like this, except in three dimensions. So in these constructions, I mean, if you, if you take Calabi as of a particular deformation type, they always go to things of the same deformation type. So if you think of it as an operation, not on particular varieties, but on a deformation type, is that actually something where it you, by deformation type, you mean omega? Yeah. So, for example, in this, in, in these particular constructions, where you, I mean, it's not clear, what, I guess, what what the definition of, of is supposed to, of a mirror is supposed to be. But here, there's kind of an algorithm, right? That you yes. So, 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 so you start with a deformation but, type, you get another, a, a new deformation. But you only take deformation types inside of here. So, so it's given by a polytope, and oh, the thing is operates on polytopes, completely. So within that stuff, it's the same deformation. Yeah. But it's a limited deformation type. So, 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 so x1 basically looks like uh, 
two surfaces coming together. This is a very bad picture, but if you look nearby, this thing becomes a circle. So, so there's a point here and there's a circle. Except uh, you have to think of three dimensions, so you should think of this as being as three. <coughs> so, so this is a three-dimensional thing. And so, so this is what's called a vanishing cycle. So, so, so there is A, which is this vanishing cycle, A2, A3, and A4. So these things form a basis for the dual. So, so in particular, the statement is that so this is a basis. I haven't, I haven't said how to define this thing, but it's four dimensions. So now the thing is, you know, this, this is a dual mirror. A1 minus S3 when you write there. When you write. Uh, what? A1 three. equals. What? Is it an H3 or an H2? It really an H3. Yeah, I'm going to ask that next. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're stealing my question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. H3. So, so, so the next thing, this thing is still a Calabi Yao. So, 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 so there's an omega. Lambda, which is uh, in H three of x, d star x. Oh, okay. So, 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 the top lambda three H zero star x. So, 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 this is holomorphic volume form. <coughs> It's a more or less continuous family, except there is a problem with the node. What? So, so, so this thing, there's a whole bunch of holomorphic forms on each fiber, uh, but it, it, it vanishes here. So, so there's a problem with the node. And uh, it's a bit more than that, right? They have no zeros. So it's, oh, yeah, you wrote one. Yeah, holomorphic volume form, yeah. So, so, so then what you can look at is uh, this IK of lambda which is the integral over, over this thing of each cycle. So this is known as omega periods. And uh, so, if, 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 so omega periods uh, uh, is something about complex geometry. They tell you, tell you how the complex structure changes. For example, if you take an elliptic curve, if, if you take the ratio of two things, that precisely gives you the telling value. The, the, the point in the complex plane is defined. Why are k and lambda related? Or what, what? It should be omega lambda. So. So, 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 so this measures C structure. Of x star. So, so, so there are four of them. So this H1 up here is equal to this H3? What? Where is H1? H1 up here is equal to the H3? <coughs> no, no. no. That, that's sheet cohomology, right? That's actually a holomorphic sections of its. Yeah, except it's, it's, it's H1. It's H1. Same, right? I mean. No, no, no. That, so, so in this case, this is a C. For quintic. For the, for the dual quintic, this is C. This is a one-dimensional family here. And those x's should be x star. That's the well. Omega lambda. lambda. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so this is a solution. So, so this single fiber d describes these things. So this is a solution of, of uh, what is called picard fourcq equation. This describes uh, uh, 
phone number around single fiber, uh, around X1, star. So, 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 so if, you, if you take the first one, that A1 is uniquely determined. <coughs> so when you go around, you come back to itself. It's uniquely determined. The other ones can, something can happen when you go around the single fiber. And that thing measures this. So now comes the, the physics part. So maybe it's worth saying, I mean, so the, here it's, it's kind of accidental that this is C, whereas the, the other thing, that's a, that's a piece of H of, of the third cohomology. This is also a piece of the third cohomology. There's different pieces. This one for Calabi, yeah, would always be one dimensional, the thing where Omega Lambda lives. Whereas it's kind of an incidental property of this particular family that this happens to be one dimensional in this case. The fact that it's a property of the quint, the, the fact that the quintic has H11 equal to. So, 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 so. No, so, so, so both of these groups could be big in, in general. But the thing where omega. So for the quintic, it's nice that it's, it's, it's one dimensional, yeah. It's, it's why it might be essentially why we could do the computation. Whereas omega lambda a priori lives in a one dimensional thing. I mean, it's a, the volume forms on a Calabi, yeah, there's a. It's unique up to scale. Oh, oh, no, yeah, so yeah, that, that, yeah, this is always one dimensional because it's a section of a line bundle, and uh, if it doesn't have zeros, there's only one a trivial line bundle. Yeah. So, so where we physics started is, um, is, is what I might call basic mirror symmetry. This goes back to Candela's De La Osa, Lena Parker's. And that says that the genus zero, so that's a pretty, so this is conjecture. So this was conjecture. Gen zero W over Quintic. Is what I called N N zero D. They, they are given by IK lambda for the dual quintic. So that's a physics statement of mirror symmetry, which makes this this precise in one case, completely precise, in exact formula. How do you relate the K and the D? What? How do you relate the K and the D? Okay. So, 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 you, so you put these things into generating function. Oh. And zero Q to the D. And uh, you do something out of these things. So actually, lambda should be psi. You don't be given by, but determined by, right? Presumably. What? Well, you think that I, I lambdas are. So, 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 so this Q is basically e to the two pi i lambda maybe over five or something. And 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 you and you put this uh, you basically take a ratio of some of these functions. What? So 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 th these functions determine the change of variable. Actually, in fact, there's a big Q and there's a change of variables. So so, so this Q corresponds to a variable lambda. But after some change of variables, but explicit change of variables between them. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Yeah, but it's wait a minute. You, the integral, what, you want to compute this power series, this formal series, using these periods. Uh, what's the procedure? So, so, so. so I don't get that. Well, you say that, yeah. So. Are you not saying how it's determined? You just want to say it's determined? Yes. OK, fine. I, mean, I can write down the whole formula, but it will take me a few okay, minutes. So, 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 but one thing I want to say, this was a precise mathematical statement. That was the first precise mathematical statement in this closed case. So we are So it was first proved by giving to Lian, Lian Yu Yao. And there is basically three, three others.
So uh, there is a real version. Which is due to, to, to Walsher. Improved by Solomon and Ponder and Walter the next year. When you look at the real ones, you take you take the same you take uh, this is determined by IK lambda and one more thing. And uh, we need to go over some, we need to call it A5 omega. And A5 is uh, class in H3 of X5 star and, and modular curve class, modular curve. Specific curve. So, so it's a, it's an extended. It extends uh, the four periods you consider here. Here, here we take one more. What does it have mean? Comma curve. What does that mean? Uh, it uh, lives in a real, uh, uh, relative homology. Yes. So it's a class of boundary. There's only four of them. If you add one more, you get these things. And when you take the generating function for this, you actually take q to one half in here for generating function, which corresponds to taking this half. Now, I so I actually prefer higher genus because the lower genus has been done. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah. this, do these proofs go just by computing both sides and comparing them, or does yes? That... Unfortunately, all the proofs of mirror symmetry have been by computing both sides, and so, so there's been no direct explanation. And I think that probably applies for homological mirror symmetry too, right? The future. <laughs> well, no, uh, Nick proved it. Uh, uh, I mean, Nick's proof is also basically uh, computing both. You open this homological mirror symmetry implies this, this, this not counting. Uh, not quite implies yet. Yeah, yeah. Getting well, that, that's why in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 so, so hydrogenous. In some ways, geometrically, it becomes even more interesting on the complex side. So it originates with Bershatsky. Vittori Guri. Above a 93 paper. What, I misspelled somebody? So, so what this says is that genus G for big one equal one, the W's of x5, it's, it's a more general statement than this. Uh, I, 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 I determined by <coughs> some solutions of uh, what, what we call homomorphic anomaly equation. And we call these solutions FG. And so that's not really a mathematical statement since it's not completely clear what this means. So the genus one case, Uh, there's a uh, work by, by Fang, Lu, Lu and uh, Yoshikawa. Oh, 06. So that says that uh, F1 <coughs> is essentially a Racing or torsion. And what racing or torsion is, it's uh, basically a combination eigenvalues 
of uh, Laplacian on, on x5 star. So there's a whole family of them, and there's different Laplacians, so there's lambda. And so, so this was the first statement that we made. The second statement there was uh, BCUV comp computation of this F1 with this definition is correct. So, so if you define it this way, the way they computed was, was, was correct. So, 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 when we ne so the next year, I, I, I proved that F1 encodes uh, N1. So, so the genus one gamma beta invariance, which is BCV prediction. F1 is defined by that bracing of torsion? Yes. Well, actually, yeah, yes. So, so F1 is defined as solutions with holomorphic anomaly equation. Actually, so, sorry, for one key point is for x5 dual. So, so, so F1 for x5 dual. So BCLB calculation is correct means that this raising attorney satisfies this anomaly equation. So. No, 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 no. Yes, so 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 it's very fact compute. So they need, there were two things. But F F one satisfies that equation, but this there can be more than one solution. Uh -huh. And to nail down the solution, they use mirror symmetry. Mm -hmm. Like for example, we knew that there is no genus one curves in degree one. Mm -hmm. So, so, so BCV used that to nail down the formula. They computed completely. So, 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 so. Is it physics? Physics on the top and math, mathematicians on the. Wait, so, 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 sorry. This is. Yeah, yeah physics. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so, but even they did not did not complete this completely. So, so. BCOV 93, let, let me call it physics determines. All, all, all N, NGD up to some initial data. G. So, so, so first you we don't know, after that we know. So in genus 1 it was easy because we knew enough data. So, 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 so even physicists do not know the full answer. So that thing compute is, uh, even physics compute is not co complete. So, so there is a paper of Huang, Clem, and, and Krakenbosch from 06. And on the physics side, this is the state of uh, this is like as far as it got. This resolves the uh, ambiguities for genus less equal than 51. That 51 comes out not out of the blue, but involves a Castanova bound. And that Certain genus D degree D curves, you can actually, you know that they don't exist, for example. So, 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 just, so just one final thing. Is that the case of some particular case or general? Yeah, case or? Uh, so, so, sorry for quintic, yes. Yeah, for quintic is much easier because if you have a two dimensional family of things, then. So, so, so just, just one statement to finish. Okay. I'm not going to go to the tables. <coughs> So again, the final statement I'm going to finish with is, is the physics. 
And this is again Vulture, but a little later. So seven. This is the real version. Or BCOV. And uh, what does that mean, BCOV? Just throw those guys up there. Oh, oh very obvious. So, 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 so we, did a, we, we did this for complex Gramovitan variants. Here's it for real. And this actually looks simpler. This looks simpler. Except. Uh, still need to define NGDR. I'm going to stop here. Thank you. Any further questions? I, I have one question. So, from the physics point of view, do you actually want the complex, not the real? So, so, so from the physics point of view, you actually started with the complex ones. But in the, string theory, yeah. thinking about you know, curves deforming and getting Riemann surfaces, yeah. is there any link? I mean, do you, is that where the physics problem comes from, the complex case? Yes. The physics. Is there a physical interpretation of the real? Is there any physical implication? Yeah, Vulture does everything from a physical point of view, yes. So, so the answer is yes, but I cannot tell you what, what it is. But, but, but Vulture does completely physical justification of the whole thing, and he does get the right formulas. And it's still string theory. It's still string theory, yes. So, 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 so this involution on the A side, anti-holomorphic involution on the A side, he told me it's supposed to correspond to a, a holomorphic involution on the B side. But, but more relevantly, it corresponds to this extra cycle, extra relative cycle. That's where he gets the extra period. So it's all string theory. And of course, I missed So you're saying that there's some sensible story for x star going on here, but there's not a, a known story for x? What, what I mean, when you say you still, you still need to define the, these chromoff Witten invariants? Yes. Okay. So it looks simpler, but they're not defined. <laughs> So, 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 they haven't looked in the mirror yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just there's some statement on X star. Is that the idea? So, 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 so no, but the, so, so if, if you can actually define them, so the way you try to compute them is by relating to Gromov Witten variance of P4, CP4. And in the real case, that the relation is actually looks much simpler. So, as soon as we can define them, I think the rest will go fairly smoothly. So, 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 the, so the way you actually compute them, once you define them, there's an, idea, there's an idea of how to compute them. But once you define them mathematically, the computation will be easier than in a complex case. I see. So there's some heuristic idea of what the definition should be, but it hasn't been made mathematically precise. That's what it is. Yes, I even more. So, so Walsh does, does even more. So the way you prove this mirror symmetry, you go from a quintic to CP4. And on CP4, you get a sum over some, some kind of graphs that come from ITA bot localization. And Walcher actually provides these graphs. He, pro he, he tells you what the graphs should be. Now, if you assume his graphs are correct, in genus 1, uh, Alexander Popo and I have already pro pro proved this uh, genus 1 statement of his, I starting with his graphs. The fact we have not proved yet is that this even defined and you get the graphs. But he told us what the graphs are. So I think the point. And the graphs are easier. If you assume that they have easier points, then there is some fixed, if it's a fixed point localization. Exactly, yes. The counting is correct. Then this uh, result of this fixed point localization is known. And if you, this, this is a kind of very defined, then that fixed point localization formula should give the answer. And for that, you have a formula. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. so in genus 1, the fixed point localization data that he provides does give his answer. And I suspect we could handle uh, the higher genus cases too, of, uh, from the fixed point data. But I think that has to be defined as this thing and to get the fixed point data. Can I Thank ask you. a simpler question? On the B model side, are the higher genus invariants defined mathematically? Uh, so, the complex case. So, so for genus 1, yes. For, 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 for genus 2 and higher, I see Lee and Kevin Costello trying to make sense of it mathematically. Is this? I think Costello probably did it. It seems like it. Maybe they've already done it. 
so, 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 so uh, Zichin Liu told me that there should be sections of some uh, line bundle, but he wasn't exactly sure what it should be for, for hydrogen. So. But so maybe Castell has already defined it. That's hard. That's a hard. It's been a hard issue, right? To yeah. Find the higher genus on the B side. Right? Yes, yeah. but but even even with genus one thing like this ray single torsion, it's it's a fairly natural object. Right. But it's not completely trivial. Right. Exactly. And when you go to higher genus, it becomes even more complicated. Right. And in in the real case, even with genus one case, he, he was not completely sure, but he thought it was some kind of, should be some kind of uh, invariant part under some involution on uh, on, on on the line bundle. It should be some, some part of it. So I'm talking about Vulture. Other questions? I think I'll actually get